Deprotonation of a hydroxyl group on the monosaccharide skeleton produces a good nucleophile. In the presence of an electrophile, addition or substitution can take place to generate a compound containing a new carbon-oxygen single bond. Typically, the electrophiles used in this context are carbonyl compounds containing a leaving group, such as anhydrides and acid halides. Like all carbonyl compounds, these electrophiles are susceptible to nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon. However, after beta elimination of the leaving group, a neutral product containing a new ester results. This process occurs unselectively to give sugars in which every hydroxyl group becomes part of an ester. I'd like to transition now to discussing the oxidation and reduction of sugars. Briefly, let's review the definitions of oxidation and reduction. In the context of organic chemistry, these terms refer to changes in the number of bonds to heteroatoms possessed by a carbon atom. Increasing the number of carbon heteroatom bonds in a compound is referred to as oxidation and the opposite process, which involves exchanging carbon heteroatom bonds for carbon hydrogen bonds, is called reduction. The exact mechanistic details of oxidation and reduction vary but these overall changes are sufficient to define the terms. The structural requirements of oxidation and reduction follow naturally from these terms. Oxidation requires the presence of a carbon-hydrogen bond that can be replaced, while reduction requires the presence of a carbon-heteroatom bond that may be replaced with the bond to hydrogen. Examining the typical open-chain form of a carbohydrate, we can see that essentially every carbon atom can be both oxidized or reduced, as every carbon possesses both carbon-oxygen and carbon-hydrogen bonds. With all this potential for oxidation and reduction, relatively mild reagents are a must for selective reactions. Let's begin with reductions of sugars. Usually, we're most interested in reducing the carbonyl groups of open-chain sugars. We'll see an application of this later when we discuss reducible and non-reducible disaccharides. All open-chain monosaccharides possess a carbonyl group that can be reduced. To avoid acid-base reactions with the hydroxyl groups and over-reduction, we use the relatively mild reagent sodium borohydride. You can think of sodium borohydride as glorified H-, a nucleophilic source of hydrogen. Mechanistically, NaBH4 delivers H- or hydride to the carbonyl carbon in an AD sub N elementary step. Quenching with acid produces a neutral alcohol product in which one of the carbon-oxygen bonds in the carbonyl group has been replaced with a CH bond. When ketoses are used, a new stereocenter results, and we can see that the resulting products are diastereomers. On the other hand, no new stereocenter is created when an aldose is used. Sugar oxidation is a little more complex as there are multiple sites that are quite susceptible to oxidation. Although the inner hydroxyl groups are somewhat sterically hindered, the aldehyde and primary alcohol groups in aldoses are both susceptible to oxidation by strong reagents. Think of oxidizing agents in organic chemistry as H- acceptors. They accept nucleophilic hydride from substrates. In this sense, they're the opposite of reducing agents, which donate H-. There are accessible CH bonds on both the aldehyde and primary alcohol carbons. Let's take a look now at two different sets of reaction conditions that oxidize sugars in different ways. A solution of bromine in water is a mild oxidizing agent. Although I'll leave it up to you to determine the precise mechanism of this process, it's an important experimental fact that two equivalents of HBr are the only byproducts of this reaction. In essence, one of the bromine atoms must pull off hydride from the substrate. However, these conditions are only strong enough to oxidize carbonyl groups to carboxylic acids. They do not touch primary alcohols, which are more stable and more highly reduced to begin with than carbonyl compounds. What attributes would we expect a stronger oxidizing agent to have? Appealing to our previous definition, Stronger oxidizing agents need to be better at accepting H-. More generally, we might say that they need to be better at accepting electrons. 
But this definition is really just the same as the definition of a strong acid, which accepts electrons from an XH bond, or, in the case of Lewis acids, from a nucleophile directly. Thus, we should expect strong acids to be good oxidizing agents, too. Indeed, if we treat an open-chain aldose with concentrated nitric acid, both the aldehyde and primary alcohol are oxidized to carboxylic acids. The initially formed byproduct of aldehyde oxidation is one equivalent of nitrous acid, or HNO2, but this decomposes rapidly into nitric oxide, water, and nitric acid. Considering the HNO2 byproduct that forms initially, I challenge you to draw a mechanism for this oxidation process. The mechanism of oxidation of the primary alcohol to an aldehyde is similar, but involves the formation of one equivalent of water as well.